if we would, as we usually do. Um, tell me when you're ready. Good to go. Go ahead, Ben. Thank you. So uh, welcome to the regularly scheduled Community Board 5 um, public meeting. Um, first item on the agenda, uh, Donald, will we do the salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, of the United States, United States, States of America. America. And, and to the, the republic, republic that stands, one nation, nation under God, 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 God indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Thank you. Do we have uh, Che No online? Hi, I'm here. Good evening. Okay, Che, you're, you're up. The first order of business then is a coronavirus update by Che No from New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Proceed. Great, thank you very much. All right, so uh, hi everyone, happy new year. Um, my name is Che No from the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. And uh, tonight I will be presenting some COVID information as well as information about, about the vaccine. Uh, so I'll get started. Um, so just to uh, get started, um, I'll give you the numbers. Um, globally, we have uh, more than 91.04 million reported case, cases uh, globally. Uh, the state had 674,674 uh, reported cases outside of New York City. And New York City alone had uh, 495,273 reported cases. Uh, we had 341 confirmed deaths in the last seven days as of today and a seven-day positivity rate of 8.08%, which is on the increasing trend. Um, as for Queens, uh, we had 128,292 confirmed cases. Of those cases, 17% uh, or 21,920 21, people have been hospitalized. And uh, we have had uh, about 6,464 confirmed deaths and 1,258 probable deaths. Um, so right now, you know, we're pushing the, you know, the social distancing messaging, the face covering messaging and so forth, but we ask you to practice the core four is, um, it's stay home if you're, especially if you're sick or exposed or recently traveled except for essential errands like testing, uh, keep distance at least six feet, wear a face covering, wash your hands. And if you're sick, don't forget to seek care. And um, I won't go over the parts about enforcement and restrictions because um, the board is well aware of what's been happening. Um, so let's get to the vaccines. So on Friday, January 8th, the governor announced that vaccine eligibility will be expanded to phase 1B starting Monday, the 11th. As of January 12th, the governor announced that vaccine eligibility will be expanded to those ages 65 and over and for those with underlying medical conditions. Um, we launched this uh, site called the COVID-19 Vaccine Finder and the hotline where individuals seeking a vaccine can view eligibility requirements and register for appointments at NYC-run sites. Um, all available appointments for this week were filled by the end of the day and um, we're trying to add more sites and appointments as we identify appropriate sites. And uh, here's some good news. Uh, we have City Field that's been announced as another 24 seven vaccination mega hub with capacity to vaccinate over 5,000 people per day. Um, it's gonna be run by the Health and Hospitals Corporation and it's expected to open the week of January 25th. So it's a 24 seven operation. Um, so as of today, 793,675 vaccines have been delivered to New York City and 267,923 uh, doses have been administered to people. So out of that, 237,991 were first doses. So phase 1B, who is eligible? Right now, it's definitely including people's ages, 65 and older, teachers, education workers, first responders, public safety workers, public transit workers, and others. Um, for more information, please visit nyc.gov slash COVID vaccine distribution for all categories. Um, these categories are 
us as a Department of Health, New York City Department of Health, we don't set it. It's set by the state, and we have to follow accordingly. So um, I've been getting a lot of angry phone calls and emails these days saying that, oh, who set these categories? It's not us. It's the state. <laughs> so we can't do anything about that. But we've been pushing to expand the categories. And um, so far, it seems to have worked. And, the, and um, let's, see, let's talk about the appointment. So the supply vaccine is very limited. Um, it's supplied by the federal government and um, it comes with a quota. Therefore, um, the amount fluctuates daily and people may not be able to make an appointment right away. And therefore, you know, we're trying to, you know, adjust our schedules and try to see if we can coax more vaccines out of them. And um, we have this site called the Vaccine Finder. It's nyc.gov slash vaccine finder where you can find locations near your address where they offer the COVID-19 vaccine. Or for those of you who may not have access to a computer or the internet, you can call 877-VAC, so it's V as in Victor, A as in Alpha, X as in X-ray, number four, NYC for assistance. Um, the hotline is available from, let me see the hours. Sorry, give me a second. Yeah, the hours are 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. We're trying to expand that. So um, when we find enough staffing, um, I think it's going to be a 24-hour hotline, which is greatly helpful. So we're trying to make that work. As for uh, the vaccines, right now we have two vaccines that are available, one from Pfizer and one from Moderna. These are both mRNA vaccines. These vaccines teach our cells how to trigger an immune response and build immunity to the virus that causes COVID-19. Our bodies get rid of the mRNA as soon as it's fin has finished using these instructions. And you cannot get COVID-19 from these vaccines. And so far, these vaccines have been shown to be more than 94% effective at protecting clinical trial participants from COVID-19. And we pretty much expect the same. Um, the Pfizer vaccine is available for people 16 years and older, and the Moderna vaccine is only for 18 years and old, um, older. Um, we're trying to find out if the pediatric populations uh, can be vaccinated, and um, they may be available to younger New Yorkers in the future. Um, side effects are normal and expected. You might feel tired or a headache and soreness at the point of injection. Um, if you feel that um, you're running a fever or if you're, if you're feeling um, extremely unwell, um, don't forget to seek care at your provider. Um, and um, yes, and so I'll go over the process for making an appointment to get your vaccine. So step one is to determine eligibility and schedule an appointment. So on our website, nyc.gov slash vaccine finder, once you go in there, um, or if you call that number 877-VAC, for NYC, um, you'll get instructions on um, how to verify your eligibility. So if you fit, if you um, fit into one of these categories, then you may, you will be eligible. And then, so once you make an appointment, you're gonna have to fill out the New York State COVID-19 vaccine form. Uh, this form can be uh, completed online, and you will receive a submission ID, or it can be completed at your vaccination site. Um, if you do fill out this form online you will get an email with the barcode and the confirmation number, the submission ID. Um, don't erase it, check your inbox for it because when you get to the testing site, they will ask, for, uh, when you get to the vaccine site, they will ask for that. Um, so we basically encourage our New Yorkers to complete the form ahead of time just to save time. And when you show up at your site, uh, you must bring proof of eligibility, be it an employee ID card, letter from an employer, affiliate organization, or a pay stub, depending on your um, eligibility status. If you're eligible due to age, you should bring a form of ID, like a driver's license or passport that includes your date of birth. What you can do right now is uh, spread the word about the city's COVID vaccine website. It's nyc.gov slash bcc. Um, if you are active on Twitter, Facebook, or other social media, you, you can, you know, feel free to use our social kits. You know, these are images, posters, hashtags, and so forth. And um, keep an eye out for additional um, sites because we're trying to open as many as possible. And uh, that's it for me. If you have any questions, um, I'm ready. Thank you. Thanks. So any, any questions or comments for Che? Ken has his hand up. Ken? Yeah, uh, just a quick question. Actually, I guess everybody's heard about Florida, how anybody can be vaccinated. And if there's only a limited amount of vaccine being given to each state, how is one state be doing this? 
Well, in Florida, they did not have a control plan, so their public health workers are tied in a bind. So, but uh, any, but anyone can go. So, you know, you could be twenty. Yeah, because they didn't have a, it, so they have oh. a limited amount of vaccine. However, the public health workers and the relevant authorities were not informed about when this, when these vaccines will be delivered. So, when these vaccines were delivered, and then the word went out that everyone's going to get vaccinated people started flocking. So there is no sense of order over it. And therefore they can't, it's, it's become very, very difficult to control the number of doses given out and the number of people coming into the vaccine site. And then, you know, all these um, other auxiliary details. Therefore the case in Florida, well, you know, it's ideal that everyone gets vaccinated, but it wasn't coordinated in a, in a manageable fashion with a limited amount of vaccines available. No. So they didn't have as smart a governor as we do. Perhaps. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. That's an oxymoron, right? Yeah, there. I know. I, I, I know. I'm being very careful there. <laughs> and so I, I think it was based on the usual population in Florida at this time of year. So they sent the amount necessary. But because of the restrictions on travel and COVID, the usual population is not there. That's why they have excess. So they're distributing it. Okay. Ed, Ed Latow had his hand up. Yes. Hi, uh, Che. Uh, I'm uh, wondering with the um, new um, COVID strain, the numbers that you gave us with the 6,000 and then the 1,244 suspected uh, deaths, uh, are they considering COVID 19? And the new strain that's popping up as COVID-19 as well, or is it being differentiated uh, from COVID-19? Um, so they're essentially um, counted as COVID-19, but due to its contagious nature and also its novel nature, we are keeping an eye out for it. For it. And I think, was it today or yesterday, we announced that we uh, found two people in New York City that um, had the strain. Um, so in our testing laboratories, as well as the private laboratories where we give guidance, um, you know, we told, you know, we're ensuring that we're keeping an eye out for the strain whenever we test it. Because uh, during, uh, when we do the PCR test, the test that takes longer, you know, the different strain obviously has different indicators and we're trying to keep an eye out for that. And um, I mean, until, until, you know, early January, you know, the, the strain wasn't, wasn't really in our borders per se. Just that they started coming in little by little. And um, I mean, as we can see in the Midwest, um, it just cropped up. So someone brought it and spread it. <laughs> and uh, we're trying to prevent that from happening. Hence, we're um, you know, asking people to take appropriate precautions. The, the key is to get vaccinated because the more people that are vaccinated, the less the virus could attack and it mutates. Uh, to all of these different variations. So if everybody gets vaccinated, it, it basically slows down, goes away, the same as the regular flu. Kathy Sumsky. Hi, I, I don't know if this is a stupid question or, or no not. No question is stupid, Kathy. But I, I know um, I got a um, text message from Northwell Health telling me that, you know, I'm eligible and, you know, because of, of my age and underlying conditions, should I wait for them? Or, you know, like, or do I just go to a, you know, like, white cough or- Catherine, you know, Catherine, if you want to wait till April, you go to Northwell. You want to get it done sooner? Call White Cross and make an appointment. Okay. Yeah, getting the vaccine is entirely up to you. But um, um, was it? Uh, yes, it was yesterday or the day before where we uh, sent uh, correspondence to all you know CEOs of hospitals and uh, federally qualified uh, medical centers to reach out to their patients that you know they have you know records on to um, get vaccinated. So these are targeting, you know, people over the age of 65 or people with, um, you know, pre-existing conditions and so forth. Um, so I guess Northwell took the first step, but um, as for when you get your vaccination, 
it's it's entirely up to you. But if you have the if you have the opportunity, and um, if you have uh, if you're taking medications or you know if you have you know pre-existing conditions, we ask you to um, you know, discuss the matter with your provider just in case. But I'm um, trying to get it as soon as possible. Dimitri? Well, that's the that's Sorry. the problem. I know that the hospital has a list of all my medications. Wyckoff doesn't, and I don't. You know, I I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay, just okay. Uh, you should you as a person should have a list of all your medications. You should have a primary doctor. You should call your primary doctor and say to them that, should I go, should I not? What do you suggest? And your primary doctor is the key to your health care. Hospitals, walk-ins, that's all baloney. You should, everyone should have a primary doctor. Everyone should have a list of all their medications. So if anything happens, and you have to go to a hospital, you take it with you. Okay, thank you. Dimitro. Hi, good evening. Hi, Jay. So the question I have is, will, will we see more and more sites opening over the course of the next two or three weeks? Because as you know, people are struggling to get appointments. Some appointments go into April and May. And so I'm wondering, you know, is the city going to do more to open up sites so that we can get more vaccinated by April and May? Or no, April yeah. at least March. So uh, what we're What's doing right now is um, so if you go on to our vaccine finder site, it's uh, nyc.gov slash vaccine finder, and you enter your address or zip code, and um, you'll see that locations are being added every day. It's just that when we're setting up the sites, it takes a couple of days because we need to train the staff and that we need to make sure that, you know, the location has enough space to triage, you know, vaccine recipients as well as those um, w waiting after they got their shot and so forth. So we're, you know, we're constantly going on site visits to determine eligibility. And um, starting Saturday, we're going to open a bunch of sites in Queens too. So, and, and then when, you know, City Field and City Field opens up, when we um, get the Javits Center running, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice and quick. But um, yeah, starting at the end of the week, we're going to, we're going to, um, you know, create more sites and so forth. Okay. We have this plan for the point of the oh, yeah. show. You're not paying yeah, but that, attention. You're not paying no, Jay, attention. But that's, no, but Vinny, Vinny, I'm missing the point here. You As are. We You're not up, paying attention. Vinny, let me finish. You called your let me, primary care. Vinny, giver. I understand that. But let me finish. If we open up more sites, does that mean we're going to get more vaccines? Because, we'll, you know, it sounds like we're going to get to a point where we're going to have more sites than we will have vaccines for people. And I don't want to be in that position. As, you know, I don't want us to be in that right. position. Right. Oh. You deal with your primary caregiver first, <clears throat> and they uh, will direct you to the right location at the right time. I cannot also, believe, um, I, I, um, I personally can't believe people don't talk to their primary doctor. They just go to these places and do things. Yes, <clears throat> I love people showing up at Wyckoff because we provide services, they're there. But please, everyone, call your primary care doctor. I understand, Ask Vinny, but them, primary and they care will doctors direct can't you in the right direction. But vaccine, they can't vaccinate everybody. There's not enough manpower in primary doctors to do that. Oh, so, believe, me. believe me, there is enough people in this world to take care of us. Right, so Jay, uh, so you're saying we're gonna have vaccines to meet the demand with locations, right? Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, don't, well. listen to, don't listen to the, and I'll, I'll quote Trump because you don't like it, but don't listen to the fake news. You heard the comment about Florida. There's no problem in Florida. Everybody's getting done. Texas is no problem. All of these places. It's talk to your primary care doctor and they will direct you in the right direction. Um, may okay. I may I finish? Um, so the you have, you have three more questions of, too. Jay, yeah, Jay, you have three it, more. You have more questions too. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, expansion of the sites are going to be in, in, in conjunction with the vaccine rollout. And as you know, Pfizer and Moderna you know, expand their capacity to you know, pull, you know, push out more vaccines, there has been a change in federal guidance where they've been holding back doses for you know, dose number twos, but they're starting to release that. So we're going to get more vaccines. And therefore, you know, once we finish the site layout and so forth, we're going to be utilizing, you know, large high schools and other areas to, you know, create more, you know, vaccine sites. So, yeah, we're going to we're going to gradually roll it out. So, um, you know, it won't be a problem because we're looking at the vaccine count, too. Thank you. Uh, Thank doctors you. in hospitals. Go ahead. Hey, Peggy. Peggy. You have to unmute, Peggy. Peggy. I only wanted to say that my friend filled out the form and refused to be submitted. Uh, the phones didn't answer. Uh, she's just crazy because the system isn't working. Where is that, Peg? In Glendale. My friend in Glendale. She what form? What with whom? She went I'm sorry? online. She went uh, in person to a facility on Metro, just beyond Woodhaven. Uh, I think it's advanced, that's supposed to have the vaccine. She went in there, they, they were listed okay. on the website as having it. They went, she right. went in there and they knew nothing whatsoever about it. So the, so the system is still screwed up. A patient who treats themselves has a fool for a doctor. Again, I can't stress more. Talk to your primary care physician they will do, take care of you. They will direct you to the right place in the right time. Forget about all these baloney sites. Well, Jay, I, I see people yeah. standing online on Myrtle Avenue and 76th Street all day long waiting to get tests. Hey, is giving us these sites to go to. Well, say, don't yeah, do it. Talk to your primary care oh, doctor. Yeah. That's why they're there. You know, get it when it comes. Okay. Ed, Ed Latow. Hi, uh, Che, uh, this is Eddie again. Uh, I've been, thank God, I've uh, been exposed to COVID through work and I've been able to have not the virus and not the antibodies. To take the vaccine, if somebody has antibodies and has a positive COVID test, will they be able to get the vaccine or they're not? Uh, being in their condition, having COVID itself and antibodies, would they not be able to get the uh, vaccine uh, being positive uh, for uh, the, uh, the, uh, the COVID it's, it's when, they, when they go uh, to uh, get vaccinated? Um, so if the person is um, testing positive on the COVID test, they, that person will not be allowed in because that person is contagious. But if that person did test for positive for antibodies, it's okay. That person can get the, can get the vaccine. Um, you know, like if you're feeling sick, uh, please uh, show up at a different time <laughs> because uh, you know we're we're trying to make sure that people you know people that feel well first should you know they, they should come to the vaccine sites because you know in a, in a moment's notice and you know people may get you know may catch COVID-19 from someone else. That's why we're trying to make sure that everyone's feeling well before they come. So um, we, you know, hopefully we hope we uh, hopefully don't, you know, expect to see, you know, actively ill individuals showing up at the vaccine sites, but it's always a possibility, right? Right. If if you test positive for the virus, you have to go to a hospital. If you test positive for the antibodies, there's no problem. Okay, you can go through the test. So if anybody shows up and gets a test and they're positive, they have to go into the hospital. They shouldn't be walking around the streets. Okay, anyone else on this subject? I don't see any other hands. Okay, if not, we'll go to the uh, public forum. And I think we have Peggy, Peggy O'Kane on. Hold on, who's that? Mariana Zero. Mariana Zero, I have a question. Go ahead. Is, uh, are you saying that as you're going for, if you make an appointment to go for the uh, vaccination, that they're going to give you a COVID test right at the same time? No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. You should okay. do both. 
Okay. okay. I was just wondering why you were saying it. I thought they tested no, you first. No, you should ask, ask, do both. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. So under the public forum, we have Peggy O'Kane. Peggy. Okay. I guess most people are aware of the homeless encampment on Myrtle at Fresh Pond underneath the drain dresser. No, they aren't. So explain to them because half our constituents don't drive on Myrtle Avenue. Well, I have had several people complain to me, older women who are afraid to wait for the bus or get off the bus because there's a whole long line of them there. Uh, a friend who lives around the corner and worked with me at St. Matthias Homeless is identifies the main one there as Pavo, a big, tall, thin fellow who's very agreeable when he's not drinking. When he is drinking, he's extremely volatile and quite dangerous. Uh, I've driven by and they're lying there in essentially beds without frames. I mean, they're lying stretched out on the, the concrete with mattresses and blankets. There's a huge amount of debris and are we going to let them lie there until they freeze to death like Marek did a couple of years ago? Or are we going to do something? They, breaking ground has been seen there. They, uh, the, my friend saw a young fellow get in their van and go with them. But Pavo and his group have always historically refused shelter. But still, it's dangerous. It's unsightly. It's bad for them because when it gets really cold, they'll just croak too, like Marek did. And something has to be done. Vinny, so, Vinny, this is Ted. Can I respond to this? You could, and then I'll, if you don't fill them in on everything we discussed, go right ahead, Ted. So, Paulus has been a problem on Myrtle since the spring. And in fact, he used to hang out in, next to Delhi 2010 on Decatur Street to the point where he was defecating and doing other things and harassing merchants uh, customers. I removed the bench from there and have it in storage. Then he moved to the bench by the post office, to the wall of the post office. He was, near, he was about a hundred feet from the entrance and he was there for most of the spring and summer and into the early fall. And then he moved to this new encampment Breaking ground, according to homeless services, because I'm in touch with them regularly. I'm in touch with the police. Bob Holden's office is assisting. Uh, breaking ground is there, at least according to homeless services, once or twice a day. Reverend Lopez knows him and is trying to get him off the street. According to homeless services and everyone else I've spoken to, even in code blue, if he refuses, that we are told there is nothing we can do. And the police have been there, although after tomorrow, the police are not gonna be involved with homeless at all. There's been at least two cleanups there. There was one on this past Friday, which I was there. In less than three hours, a cot returned. And usually overnight, Palace sleeps there. And the woman and our other friends, and I don't know what relationship they are, whether they're cousins or family or what, but we are very we are very frustrated by it. And uh, you know, I don't know what to do. If anyone has any other ideas, but we are constantly emailing. I take photos almost every other day. I and and, and you know, and that's it. And, and it's, it's 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 an ongoing issue. And uh, go ahead, Benny. After my uh, blue word and laced response to uh, homeless services, the answer came back that they can't do anything. They're not allowed to remove them. Um, they offer them services. If they don't accept them, that's it. Supposedly the woman accepted services last week, Ted. Yeah. Uh, and then they didn't even know how many people were there because Ted had to produce a photo showing that there were two males living there uh, when they thought it was only one. So uh, homeless services, and I'm gonna, I apologize for my language, sucks. 
They have no idea what to do with people. This mayor is a, a total disgrace that allows people to live on the streets, endangering themselves, endangering the rest of us with COVID and everything else. Uh, as Ted said, the hardworking people that take that bus, go to work every day, can't even stand on a bus stop. They hope that the bus stops for them because they can't tell if they're there or not. So it, the this city is in total disarray, and uh, I don't personally. I don't know what to do about it. I just keep ranting and raving. Boy. Gary keeps working hard on it. He tries to get them services. He does everything he can, but it, it's it's like a total loss. All right. Anything Peggy, else? You muted yourself. Peggy, you muted Peggy. yourself. As Fargo is, as far as. Uh... No, you muted hey. yourself again. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it, it says, my message says I am muted. Uh, Pavo is a womanizer, so any woman there is not necessarily his relation, but rather the one he's enamored of at the moment, and he is enamored easily. As, so. I, I said, as I said the other day, when I spoke to him, uh, when he moved, uh, his, uh, his, he said he's just waiting to die. I offered to help him, but it doesn't work. Won't take it. There's a whole two of them that won't take it. They'd mm -hmm. rather die in the street. Yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody just came in the meeting on a telephone, 347-612. Yes, Stephen Fiedler. Oh, okay, Steve. How are you? All okay. right, guys. How's everybody? Good. So you're in, so, you're in Stephen, you're in twice? I'm in twice. You have another device that says you logged in already. I'm watching you on my computer and talking to you on my phone. So you're in well, twice. You shouldn't okay. be doing both. <laughs> okay. But that, all right. So if there's nothing else under the public forum, uh, Laura, are you there? Miss Laura, are you yes. online? Yes, I am. Would you call the attendance, please? Sure. Bubanasha at Hikari. I'm here. Vincent Arcuri. Present. Tony Benanti. Yeah. Eric Butkowitz. Present. Bob Chimelli. We know he was there before. Yeah, he's here. Yeah, he's here. He just stepped back. Uh, yeah, Walter I'm Clayton. Here. Sorry. That's yeah. Uh, Patty Crowley. Present. Brian Julie. Here. Jerry Drake. Here. Uh, Dimitro Pikowski. Here. Steve Fiedler. Here. Sukarung. Present. Fred Haller. Here. Fred Hofferly. Fred Hofferly, I know I saw you. Hmm. Yes, um, Rich, Rich Huber. Present. Paul Kersner. Present. Kinga Kersna. Present. Marianne Latanzio. Present. Ed Latow. Present. Mike Liendo. I didn't see him. John oh. Meyer. Present. Uh, Patricia Maltisos. Present. Edgar Mantel. Present. Kathy Massey. Present. Eileen Maloney. Less present. Margaret O'Kane. Present. Michael O'Kane. Present. Donald Passantino. Present. Mike Percelli. Here. If I blame you, brushing your teeth, I'm getting into an accident. Let's end by. Hello. Somebody's uh, interfering. Laura. Okay. Ken Rebberger. Here. Um, Ted Renz. Present. Kelvin Rodriguez. I didn't see him. Luis Rodriguez. I know Is I it? saw Lu uh, Luis. Okay. Present. Lee Rottenberg. Present. 
Walter Sanchez. Here. Carmen Santana. Dennis Stefan. Kathy Sumsky. Present. Megan Tadio. I didn't see her. Gynal Thapa. Gynal. I thought I saw him. Barbara Toscano. Present. Patrick Trincasey. Here. Micheline Von Draven. Present. Mariana Zero. I know I saw her. And Nan Zhang. Marianne, Marianne Zero is here. She's muted. Oh, OK. I thought I saw her. So we have Gary Giordano and Laura Mulvihill on staff. Um, Joe Nazarino, are you out there? Yes, I am here. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year, Mr. Chairman, District Manager, everybody. Hope all is well. Uh, I'm going to take two minutes because what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my time over. Um, as you know, we have a um, new borough president, very excited, new vision, new energy. Um, and he is recognized and is put in place uh, new levels to help the, the boards. Um, get to a smooth running uniform uh, practice throughout Queens. And we are very lucky and I'm gonna introduce now a new position and a new person, Deputy, um, Deputy, what is she? Deputy Commissioner? Oh God, she's gonna have to- We don't know, you're the other guy that's talking. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I can't take you, I can't take you yeah. anywhere. Wait, yeah, I know, it's horrible. But anyway, there she is, she'll give her title and she'll tell you a little bit about uh, new things here. Uh, and her name, I know, is Kat Breslin. Kat. <laughs> uh, hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. I wanted to come on by and say hi. Uh, we have a new application process for community board members. Uh, you may have heard about it. It is online and it does not require you to have it notarized. You do not have to print it out. It let, is. Let, let me interrupt you once. Okay. Vinny, yes, Again, I'm listening. Reintroduce yourself with your real title. My apologies. Uh, my name is Kat Bresler. I am the Deputy Director for Community Boards in Borough Hall. Uh, and, and Joe wears a lot of hats. So him keeping all of those straights and, and, and my name, I'm just happy to be here with him. And your title, forgive me. Uh, the titles, those are a dime a dozen. Uh, okay. I, I, I don't mean that. Uh, I am very excited about my new role. Anywho, uh, our new application process is rolling out. It does not need to be notarized. If you do have a relationship with your council member and you are interested in having them nominate you in addition to filling it out online, we do encourage you to reach out to your council member and they will uh, send forward a list to the borough president and have a discussion with them at a later date about their nominations. Um, I'm going to put my link to the community board application in the chat. And I did also want to leave you all with my email. I've heard a lot about what's going on with testing and tracing and vaccinating. And I do want to keep my ear to the ground with it all. There are some folks that are falling through the cracks and we certainly don't want to see that. Uh, my father, uh, did 60 days needing oxygen in April during the first round. I am a survivor of COVID myself uh, with waning antibodies, excited to get the vaccine just as everyone else is. Uh, but do keep me posted on your experiences and difficulties. And if you are um, with a specific circumstance that I might be able to help you with. Uh, so again, I'm gonna put my email in the chat. And if you do have any questions, I'm here for it. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. So, um, okay, I will go to the uh, chairperson report. Um, 
We have the minutes. Let's get rid of some business. We have minutes of the meeting, board meeting minutes. Uh, have any? We have a motion to accept. And anybody out there? Hello. Motion to accept to accept the minutes as read. Walter seconded. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. I have uh, <clears throat> Lori. You want to read the uh, liquor licenses and uh, anything else? Sure. Okay. Liquor, wine, beer, and cider applications and renewals for new liquor licenses. We have Time Mission Inc. at 70 11 Grand Avenue in Maspeth. And we also have Callum Casella Group LLC doing business as PAN at 1563 Decatur Street in Ridgewood. For, for liquor license renewals, we have Seneca Fiesta Corp at 603 Seneca Avenue in Ridgewood. We have Jungo Road LLC doing business as the Deep End, 10-80 Wyckoff Avenue in Ridgewood. The Loyal Order of Moose Lodge 1642 at 7215 Grand Avenue, Maspeth. JNS Ventures Limited doing business as Vixen, 6007 Metropolitan Avenue in Ridgewood, and Gotshea Central Holdings Company Inc., 655 657 Fairview Avenue, Ridgewood. For new wine and beer licenses, we have Roses Deli and Pizza Corp., 63 98 100 Woodhaven Boulevard, Rego Park. And we have Cypress Cafe LLC at 1702 Stanhope Street in Ridgewood. For wine or beer license renewals, we have Craft Culture New York Inc. doing business as Craft Culture at 59-04 Myrtle Avenue in Ridgewood. And for other notifications, IVB Deli Grocery Corp. at 59-59 69th Street in Maspeth will be submitting a new application for a grocery, deli, wine, beer, and cider license. So and Laura, it. on uh, Cypress Cafe, mm -hmm. that was uh, previously a renewal. Did uh, they have a change in ownership? They said it's a new wine and or beer license. And I sent them our questionnaire, but I don't believe that we got it back yet. So I'll have to let you know when we do. Because I recall that uh, I think a year or two ago as a, a renewal. Yeah, so I'm I, just wondering if the change in ownership. Yeah, if there was, we'll find out when we get their uh, questionnaire. Thank you. Thank you. No. Um, any questions or comments? Okay. Um, let's see what I have here. Um, uh, elected officials, uh, do we have anything from the mayor's office? Mr. Yes. G, you got a bunch of, of uh, statements. We'll start anything from the mayor's office. Yeah, if you don't mind, I would like to read first from uh, police officer Berish. Okay, yeah, I forgot, I'm sorry, thank you. All right, so we did get a statement from uh, police officer Michael Berish, who's the one of the two community affairs officers for the 104th police precinct. And uh, he says, uh, hello, we wish you all a happy new year. Below are some current crime trends that have been taking place throughout the 104th precinct. For the past 28 day period, we have seen an uptick in burglaries and grand larceny auto. In regards to the burglaries, uh, they're primarily commercial establishments. He says, we urge everyone to use roll down gates, make sure all cameras are in proper working order and to not leave large amounts of cash inside the register. We have also seen robbery of uh, scratch off lot lotto tickets in the Maspeth area. We have been visiting locations that sell these tickets to educate them on the proper way to display the scratch offs. Um, and this has been taking place throughout Queens. We continue to ask you not to leave any keys or key fobs in the vehicle as uh, this drives our crime of grand larceny order. In regards to the police involved shooting that took place in Maspeth on Friday, last Friday, this incident is currently under investigation. 
but you can watch the news conference on the 104th Precinct Twitter page. Thank you to Vin and Gary for providing us with any information that they hear that may need police attention. As always, please feel free to write or call. And he says, thanks, police officer Michael Berish. And then we have a statement from the mayor's office from Jessica Schabowski, who's the Queensboro director of the mayor's community affairs unit. And she wishes everyone a happy new year, says the city uh, set an ambitious goal of administering 1 million COVID-19 doses, vaccine doses by the end of January. We are opening large scale vaccination centers in the coming weeks, which will operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The City Field site, which I call New Shea Stadium, uh, will launch the week of January the 25th. We will also open 12 additional vaccine hubs across the city, which will be open 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week. Last week, the mayor advocated for the state to expand the distribution categories to include both 1A and 1B, and the governor announced this expansion on Friday. 1B includes individuals age 75 and older, first responders, teachers, public transit workers, grocery store workers, and public safety workers. On Tuesday, meaning yesterday, the 12th of January, the governor announced the expanded eligibility for individuals age 65 and older, as well as uh, immuno, compromised populations. The city's vaccination pace is picking up quickly, but we are not getting enough doses from the federal government and the manufacturers. The mayor continues to advocate for the federal government to invoke the Defense Production Act. Eligible New Yorkers can reserve their appointment by calling 877-VAX for the number four NYC, which translates into 877-829-4692, or by visiting vaccinefinder.nyc.gov. And she signs it, Jessica Shabowski. Okay. Then we received a statement from Congresswoman Grace Meng's office, from Christian Romero, representing uh, Congresswoman Grace Meng. Good evening, CB5. Um, I hope everyone is well. I miss seeing everyone in person, and I hope everyone is staying healthy and safe. On behalf of Congresswoman Meng, I would like to wish everyone a happy and healthy new year. The Congresswoman was in uh, Washington, D.C. earlier this month to be sworn into her fifth term in Congress. As the new 117th Congress starts, the Congresswoman will be prioritizing COVID-19 recovery, the safety, health, and livelihoods of Queen's families, making sure that no one goes hungry, that everyone has affordable and accessible internet, and clean air and water. She will be working with her congressional colleagues as well as the incoming Biden-Harris administration <clears throat> on these priorities. Uh, Congresswoman Meng extends her gratitude to all of you and looks forward to continue to serve many of you these next two years. And then he gives some legislative updates. The Congresswoman secured a record $180 million for the Nonprofit Security Grant Program which is a federally funded program to help houses of worship and nonprofits improve security. This is a $90 million increase from what she secured in the last fiscal year. And then at the end of December, Congress passed and the president signed into law a massive end of the year package that included $1.4 trillion to fund the federal government and 900 billion in another coronavirus relief package. Some key federal funding includes $114 billion for SNAP or food stamps, with 16 billion of that for 
for the women's infants and children's nutrition program uh, known as WIC. And also uh, $3.8 billion is secured for opioid prevention and treatment, $952 million for senior nutrition programs, 90 million for um, VA medical care, and $3.5 billion for the community development block grants. As always, if you have any questions, our office is here to help. Our main office number is 718-358-6364. Everyone should have my uh, work cell. If you don't, feel, please feel free to always call me at 202-420-8888. And that's Christian Romero representing Congresswoman Grace Lang. Um, then we received a statement from the Office of Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez. Um, and it's from Julio Salazar, a member of her staff. Uh, Julio wishes us well and uh, says, good evening, Community Board 5 Queens. Firstly, I would like to express appreciation on behalf of the entire office to everyone who called and texted to inquire about the Congresswoman and her staff's safety during the Capitol Hill riot. Thankfully, I can report the Congresswoman and her staff were able to shelter in place without injury. However, we ask that you keep those lives that were lost in mind. At the close of 2020, the Congresswoman released a newsletter detailing progress on a number of issues, most importantly, COVID relief. The latest relief bill included $300 billion for the U.S. Small Business Administration's programs. Um, but he's got all initials here, and I don't know what they necessarily mean. The first one I know, PPP, and then EIDL, and then EIDL advances amongst other programs. Additionally, there were a number of changes to the previous lending rules, expanding the eligibility of qualified businesses. And additional resources are being provided to community development financial institutions that have existing ties to mom and pop shops throughout our neighborhoods. In regard to the stimulus payment, if a constituent has not received the direct transfer payment or debit card, please let us know and we can inquire with the Internal Revenue Service on your behalf. If you have a specific case that we can assist you with or any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you, Chairperson, District Manager, and Board Members. All the best, Julio Salazar. Okay. Then we have a statement from Council Member Robert Holden. Hello, neighbors, community board five members and fellow elected officials. I wish you all a happy and healthy new year and that you all stay safe while we continue to combat this deadly pandemic. I thank you for your continued work and volunteerism as we navigate this challenging year together. My office continues to work hard on behalf of Ridgewood, Glendale, Maspeth, Middle Village, Woodhaven, and Woodside. Should anyone need any assistance, you can call at 718-366-3900 or email district30 at council.nyc.gov. We have been receiving many calls from constituents on vaccine accessibility. Our seniors have relayed their frustration with a vaccine rollout where appointments initially were only available via the vaccinefinder.nyc website. Eventually the city uh, put up a phone line where those without computer or internet access could make appointments. However, complaints continue to come in with the lack of availability of appointments. This is something that I have made clear with the mayor's office and we are working to find more vaccine centers in CB5 and other parts of uh, his district. As chair of the Committee on Technology in the New York City Council, Councilman Holden states that he wrote a letter on Tuesday, January 12th to Mayor de Blasio on how the city would 
could better utilize technology and outreach in the vaccination efforts. We have declared war on COVID-19, yet we do not see wartime efforts in the fight against this deadly virus. The city has several agencies and officers tasked with creating tools and services to make city services more accessible and user-friendly. Thanks to uh, Beta NYC's work, a civic organization that highlights the need for increased technology use in New York City, we discovered that several city agencies and offices with technological expertise were not asked to contribute to the vaccine rollout. This was not reassuring to learn. Earlier today, I joined public advocate uh, Jamani Williams, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, and Beta NYC in a press conference calling on the mayor to do more on this issue. Once again, I thank you for your continued work on behalf of the neighborhoods within Community Board 5. I am always at your disposal, and I wish to continue our excellent working relationship. So that's Council Member Robert Holden. Then we have a statement from S State Senator um, Joseph Adabo. Good evening and Happy New Year. Last week, we started the 2021 New York State Legislative Session, and I was proudly sworn into office virtually. I would like to thank the community for their support over the years, and I look forward to serving the community up in Albany. I truly appreciate the honor and privilege uh, for me, uh, given to me by my constituents to represent them as their New York State Senator. My Middle Village office is monitoring various issues, including library reopening, the 70th Street area sewer project, and no parking signs for film shoots. I know that some people have pending unemployment cases and my office is available to assist anyone who is still waiting for unemployment benefits. If any constituent has questions about COVID vaccine distribution or COVID testing sites, they can contact my office. I have directly reached out to the mayor's office about the lack of vaccine distribution sites in Community Board 5, and I am working on adding more sites throughout my district. My Middle Village office is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and, and can be contacted 24 hours a day, seven days a week, by calling 718-497-1630, 718-497-1630. And then we have a statement by Lessie um, Pereb from uh, Assembly Member Brian Barnwell's office. Happy New Year to everyone and their loved ones. Thank you to the community board and its staff for their continued service to the community. Assemblyman Barnwell and our team would like to thank the community for donating uh, to their annual toy drive. We were able to bring toys to families in need and we sincerely appreciate the time and effort of everyone involved. Our office has been continuing to deal with the issue of loud music and drag racing throughout our neighborhoods. As you know, this issue has been ongoing for months. We, alongside Council Member Holden's office, have demanded action from City Hall on this issue. Recently, the NYPD have confiscated speakers and have issued criminal summonses. <clears throat> we will continue to monitor the situation and be in constant communication with the NYPD and the community until this issue is permanently resolved. Luckily, for the last few weeks, uh, given the holidays and recent snowfall, th there have not been any reports of music drag racing as far as we know. However, if you notice the music again, report it to 311 and let us know. Even if you are not sure where the music is coming from, file it with 311, as this helps the police officers pinpoint the location and it creates a written record for the city to see how bad this issue is. After reporting it to 311, regardless of what time of day or night it is, you can call us at 718-651-3185 or email barnwellb at newyorknyassembly.gov, barnwellb at nyassembly.gov, so that we can immediately let the NYPD know. 
If you observe drag racing, you can call 911 and report it for dangerous driving. If you have any questions or issues that you need assistance with, please do not hesitate to reach out to our office. Thank you. And that's it, Mr. Vinny. Motion for the controller. I'm sorry. The controller. No, we don't have a statement from the controller. Okay. Not that I know a, of. We had a message there. Okay. Um, Ken, you have a question? Ken? Yes. Uh, yeah, last night at our uh, Liberty Park homeowners meeting, the officer also told us about with the fob, with your key fob, not to leave it on your windowsill inside the house because good chance it can activate your, your car door. Because if you're six feet away or more, you know, sometimes okay. they're a little stronger. Yeah. Some people leave the second one in their glove compartment, so. Wonderful like thing, that. right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let me see what else. Laura, did we have anything else to discuss? No, Vinny, there were no um, demo notices this month. Okay, very good. Any comments or questions for the chair, which is me? If not, we'll uh, turn it over to the district manager for his comments. Yeah, the first thing I'd like to say is that, uh, you know, the the COVID positivity rate numbers are way up. It Certainly they're way up throughout most of the city of New York, and that includes Queens. So I know it's not very long ago where, uh, you know, the mayor and the governor were talking about um, school not being opened if the, if the positivity rate went above, I think it was 2%. And now in a lot of neighborhoods, including our own, that COVID positivity rate is more than 7%. In some neighborhoods, it's, I think it's as high as 15, not our neighborhoods, but um, some of the other areas of the city that have had higher rates. For whatever reason, Manhattan seems to be far lower uh, than the rest of the city. But as Chano said, the least we can do as New Yorkers and Americans is to wear a mask when we're anywhere near people, to keep at least six feet of distance um, and to wash our hands and to stay home if we are sick. That's the least we can do. I mean, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, we are probably the most important country on earth. I don't deemed to know who's the best or anything like that. But we've done very, very poorly per capita with regard to this coronavirus infection and the death rates. And I know the vaccine is here, but a lot of us have quite some time before we're gonna get the vaccine. So we better do the right thing. Um, as far as local projects goes, uh, from what I know, I haven't seen them lately, uh, the, re the removal of the old paint along the M train structure and repairing the structure from Fresh Pond to Wyckoff, uh, from Fresh Pond Road to Wyckoff Avenue is ongoing. Um, and I'm hoping that they'll be done sometime uh, by the middle of 2021. This is something we pushed hard for. Uh, they bid it out and the bids came back too crazy for their liking. So the work I think is almost entirely, if not entirely being done in house. That 70th street area sewer project, that enormous sewer uh, where they're micro tunneling down as far as 60 feet um, is ongoing. Uh, that contractor seems to be doing well, except for that cave-in that occurred 
on a portion of 70th Street, I think near 52nd Avenue. They did hold off with any work on Grand Avenue until after the holidays, so that's a good thing. That's something that we stress to them, that we didn't want business uh, to be even hurt more by um, these huge trenches on Grand Avenue during the, the holiday season. Continue to put your garbage out before midnight, the day before your collection, because I can't assure you at what time of day uh, that garbage will be picked up. There is a, a project that's overdue that was supposed to start, I believe, in September for um, the replacement or the reconstruction of the running track and the turf, uh, the soccer field slash football field inside the running track. At, Juniper, at the West End of Juniper Valley Park. And the reason, the main reason we are told that that project is delayed is because the original contractor pulled out after winning the, the award. And it, I believe they're uh, selecting the contractor that was the second lowest bidder. And as far as that homeless man near our office, you know, Myrtle Avenue, just east of Fresh Pond Road, he's got a really nice shelter since we got them, the Long Island Railroad to completely renovate um, that trestle there. Uh, otherwise it used to be dripping like crazy and it wouldn't be someplace you'd wanna be under, but but Ted and I and, and Council Member Holden and others have tried to get the Department of Homeless Services to remove that man from that location when the, at least when the weather gets under 32 degrees, which we which Ted called code blue and which we thought was going to be, you know, legally possible. And now we are told that no, the law changed a few years ago and these people can stay on the street so to a large extent from what i know it's a legal issue and the law i believe would have to be changed to give anybody the right to remove that person from the street but all this is complicated by the fact that you know there's the shelters are half the capacity that they would normally be i think in almost all cases to uh, allow for uh, social distancing and to lessen the likelihood that people in the shelter system would get the coronavirus. So for instance, it, at the Cooper Avenue site, I believe there are only, a, there are a hundred men there. If it wasn't for the COVID, we could have 200. And that's why the city moved to my knowledge to get people in the shelter system placed in hotels for social distancing purposes. This has also allowed people to be let out of jail early and all sorts of other issues. So this, this virus has been a plague in so many different ways. So that's it from me, sir. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments from? Nice, uh, Ken has his hand up. Yeah, you know, Gary, with the homeless man on under Fresh Pond Road there, isn't that, wouldn't that be almost part of the Department of Sanitation? I mean, let's, the, let's face it, the stores are, they get uh, fined if they don't keep their sidewalk clean. Well, this is Long Island Railroad. Aren't they, aren't they supposed to keep their sidewalk clean? Those sidewalks, sir, have never been, to my knowledge, the legal responsibility of the Long Island Railroad. Oh, um, <laughs> they are the legal responsibility of the Department of Sanitation, who has done two cleanups there so far. And if he's there and it's his property, no one's allowed to take it. So when he, if and when he leaves, sanitation goes in and does a sweep and cleans it out. But then for some, wherever he gets all of his stuff, he comes back with twice as much. So, Dimitro, what's up? 
No, Vinny, I just wanted to, uh, Gary, thank you for staying on top of the Juniper Valley field and track. And it's been a long time since that project's been started and hasn't yet to start. And just wondering the timeline on when that you, when you think that award will get, you know, provided to the company and when you think this whole thing might be done, like time frame, two years, three years? Well, um, uh, as far as I know, the money is still there. Um, I'm hoping by April they would begin. And I think the project would be a good solid year. Okay. All right. No, that's fine. That's Was it actually awarded, Gary? Yes. They tell me yes. So the award, um, I think they'll probably delay it till uh, July 1 for financial purposes. So the money will be in next year's expenditures because they balance this year and next year is the problem. That's my opinion. Okay. Anything else? That's all. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. You're welcome. Any committee, do we have any committee reports? No committee reports. Okay. Um, let's see. This is 8.40. Any uh, old business? <clears throat> any new business? I guess I have something. Gary Gary and I spoke with, uh, this is Walter Sanchez. We spoke with um, the people at Amazon, Gary. Um, there, was, there was a complaint that there were ballisters, uh, temporary ballisters put out on Metropolitan Avenue blocking too many lanes while they were doing the um, construction over there. And if you remember, I guess it came to, to, to me because the Lane Use Committee uh, really worked with them, with the owners of the Metro, Metro Mall over there in, in, in putting in those uh, uh, garages and, and having them do turning lanes for trucks inside the property. and. It seemed like uh, the bollards were out in the street a little bit too far and, and slowing down traffic on Metropolitan Avenue, but uh, they were very responsive and said they'd look into it and talk to the, the, the contractors so that they weren't out there too far. Uh, someone had said there was one lane of traffic each way on Metropolitan Avenue. I had driven by there a number of times afterwards, and it didn't seem like they were out very far. Uh, if anything, they're out maybe three or four feet um, obstructing half half a lane i don't know if you saw anything different but i was impressed um gary on on just how responsive they were and anytime you know there's any kind of a problem over there they'll they'll get on the phone with us pretty quickly that's all i have to report on that gary unless you have anything else to say yeah walter i don't i i mean i don't think they improved the situation much and so i've got to get after um both Amazon and Metro Mall, because what it is is that they've got those barriers out. And Steve Fiedler has been after me the most with regard to this. Um, God bless Mr. Fiedler. But they have those barriers out to the point where they're forcing one to go over the double yellow line as you're traveling eastbound on Metro. And no work has been taking place there. It seems they might have some additional work to do, but for goodness sakes, they, they, they're taking a lane and part of the only available lane, forcing people over the double yellow. Thank God Metropolitan Avenue is quite wide over there. I'm yeah. just saying, I didn't see that. When, when I, I had driven by a couple of times uh, uh, about three or four days after that, I don't know whether they took care of it by that time, but all I saw was the, 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 the temporary ballot to out about three feet into one of the two lanes going eastbound. I, I didn't see people going, having to go over double yellow lines. So yeah. I don't know, Steve, have you seen, has, has it gone back? I, I didn't see that at all. I and mean, that's all I'm saying. Steve, oh, I, I haven't seen anything either. No, I, I really didn't see it, but okay. Okay. Anything else to discuss? Yeah, in, in order, I'm going to go Kathy Sumsky first. Yeah. Hi, um, Gary. I sent you an email. I, I hate to sound like a broken record about 73rd place, 
but um, <laughs> the garbage piled up. Sanitation came last night, cleaned it beautifully. But they also put a speed bump in, which we had been asking for a speed bump or a speed camera because of the speeding on that stretch. As you know, teenagers were killed um, last year. Oh, don't hold your head, Vincent. It happens. I know um, nobody really cares about this side, but we do. No, we um, care, but it's we've discussed it. We've gone over it. But we've, they put the speed bump down by 70th Avenue, or, or not 70th, 69th Road, where it absolutely does no good at all. Okay. Does anybody so, know about that? Talk to Gary at the office, and we'll review it with the agency. Okay. More committee work, not for now. All right. Well, it's old business, new business. I understand. Well, we'll go over it. And talk to him directly. All right. Uh, hey, can you hear me? Sorry. Who? I mean, I get I get all my help from Mr. Holden more than I get from the community board on it. Thank you. Thank, from a community board member making that statement, I, I have to disagree with you and ask well, you not to make those kind of statements no. on the air that you get nothing from the community board. You Thank never you. respond to my emails. I think you should talk to the borough president about that. You never respond to my emails. All right. Thank you. All right. Who's next? Steve, hang on. Steve, Steve, you tried to speak? Yeah. No. Yeah. Whoever so was the, next in line. Well, Steve, I think was trying to address one of the other topics. Kenny, yes. did you hear that? The Metropolitan Avenue situation. The what Metropolitan walkway Avenue situation. Explain what you're talking about, please. The issue we were talking about before with Amazon by the Metro Mall. Okay, so everybody right. understands. So the walkway is taking the whole right lane. And now it's even pushed a little bit more in to the left lane. So like somebody said before, you have to go all the way out. The construction that is not finished for the sidewalk seems like it's a sewer project because they have like, I don't know, 12 inch black pipe sitting on the ground. And just Saturday night into Sunday, there was a big accident because all of those things now, about four or five of them are smashed and the gate is on the ground. So it's been a couple of months now. And if we were back to regular school and regular traffic, that place would be a nightmare. So I'm talking to Gary and he said he's gonna see what he can do, but there was just a bad accident there over the weekend. Okay. okay? Thank you. Thank you. Lee Rottenberg. Hi, um, just wanted to, you know, raise a couple issues. I try to always listen to. Um, I'm, I'm going to say something. I don't care. Hold on. Let him finish. Oh. He's speaking. Go ahead, Lee. Yeah, um, I always try to listen to de Blasio and Cuomo's press conferences and a couple issues. I know when we were talking about de Blasio um, making it easier to sign up for the coronavirus um, uh, vaccines, what they said on New York One News is that each site is a separate uh, entity. So, and they don't tell you if any spots are available. So somebody would have to go online, type in a lot of information, and then it says whether a spot is available or not. And if it's not available, then you have to go to another site, have all the same information again. And people are getting very frustrated because they do it four or five times and all the sites are not available. And they're suggesting that before you put your information in, you know if there's any spaces open before you waste your time. Okay. Um, so oh, I'm no sorry, one yeah. is paying attention to me. You're dealing with your personal health and a medical situation that you should speak to your private doctor first and get their advice as to what to do and where to go. This online baloney 
is only going to run you around in circles. You have no idea who's treating you or mm -hmm. what you're being treated for. So please, everyone, call your private doctor. Ask them what to do. They will advise you and they will direct you to the proper place. Okay, well, Don't I'm just deal with this online crap. Well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. You know, the system's not working. Uh, the second thing I want to bring up is I know there's a lot of talk about the homeless shelters being built places, and there's been a lot of um, letters to the editor and things about people, um, site, homeless shelters are being set up, and there's absolutely no community input. Nobody's being advised. It's happening in Elmhurst right now, and all the people in the neighborhood are up in arms because they weren't even advised to it at a community board meeting or anything. So no, no. We, as we understand it, working. they're doing away with homeless shelters because they're havens for disease spread. So well, if, you, if, you know, if you know of a new homeless shelter being open somewhere, let us know so we could look into it and ask why they would be putting people in a congregate situation at this time of COVID because they're not supposed to be doing it. You're hundred percent right. I'll, I'll contact Gary and let him know tomorrow. I have the letters to the Thanks. editor where they were saying that, and it's a problem. Well, letters to the editor, again, it's the same thing as you calling, going online and looking for a medical facility. Well, my whole point was that, no, not a medical facility, a site to get the coronavirus from the state. You uh, don't want a site to get the coronavirus again. Call your private doctor. They will advise you when and where to go. Right. I'm just please, please, just everyone, listen. Mm -hmm. Forget this online baloney. Well, that's what the mayor is pressing for. No. Oh, gee, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, private no, I'm just doctor, you private doctor, private doctor. I 100% agree with you. I'm just telling you what's going on out there. Okay, so that's John it. Meyer, what do you have to say? Uh, Vinny, I wanted to, I raised my hand initially just to confirm uh, what Steve is talking about with, and, and what uh, Gary presented. Uh, there has been no real conditional change on Metro at the Metro Mall uh, with Amazon. There hasn't been a lot of work. There has been more and more bunching of those uh, barriers out into the roadway. Uh, I would never say that there is even a lane for pedestrians. There, uh, the pedestrian passageway is also obstructed half the time. With well, that. I think we're mixing projects. I think the one project is the water main. No, this is this is near no. the gate. This is all connected. It's all connected. Yeah. Okay. It's all connected. Um, I thought it was. I thought it was two different ones. The water main. And then the, uh, no. the in the building. If, if there is a water main going on there, there's no work happening with that either. The barriers have been connected to the Amazon work all, all okay. this year. So I wouldn't put them on anybody else. They're they're connected to the Amazon contract. All right, we'll, we'll look into it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and in light of that, and some of the questions about traffic and transportation issues, we do have a committee meeting that is scheduled to happen on Tuesday, I believe the 26th. Uh, hopefully there'll be a committee meeting. Uh, you know, the way to get onto the, the virtual meeting will be sent out later. Okay. In the um, but one last comment, Vinny, I understand your frustration. I understand your, your concern and your, your good recommendation if somebody has benefited enough to have the privilege of a private doctor. But there's a hell of a lot of people in eight plus million people in New York City that do not have a private health care provider that they can consult. So there is a lot of information out there and it's useful. So don't dismiss it outright, please. Well, I, I feel differently that if you don't have a private practitioner taking care of you, maintaining your medical records, you're out there in the woods and anything that happens to you, no one has your background because as far as electronic medical records go, they're only as good as the inputter and your private practitioner is the key to inputting your medical records. Vinny, 
I so I would recommend with... that if you don't have a doctor, go out and get one. You're speaking from a level of a great amount of privilege. That's all I'm going to say. I have not, not what privilege. I'm on Social Security. I'm on Medicare. So don't give me that crap privilege. Dennis. Yeah, uh, Gary, just I, you know, circling back to the 70 Street Sewer Project, I don't know if you were aware, but a pretty sizable sinkhole opened up this morning uh, there at 70th and I think it was 53rd. Um, around, I guess it was around 11 o'clock this morning. It was, I'd say it was close to eight feet long by uh, six feet wide, something like that. It was oh, pretty wow. Long. Yeah, right, right in the middle of the intersection. Um, and there's been there's been uh, smaller ones that have opened up, um, so it's it's an ongoing thing. Okay, who's next? Peggy. Peggy O'Kane. Okay, two 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 issues. Two days this week again, the bus lanes on Fresh Pond Road are not being taken care of. They're got parking when they shouldn't. And the second issue is what's happening at Saint at Miraculous Metal Convent. People are telling me it's going to be a homeless shelter. I don't believe it, but I'd like to be able to refute them. Thank you. There were three different building department filings for the uh, two lots. Um, when we check with the building department, there were three different buildings uh, listed on one uh, lot and uh, property lot. Um, that's all we know. Um, yeah. We haven't uh, gotten any more information. Um, I intend to one day follow up with the pastor because he's listed as a developer. Uh, so we'll look into that, Peg. Thank you for reminding me. Lee. Lee. Yes, hi. Uh, the Queen's Ledger had a two page story January 7th. Neighbors upset from lack of notification about shelters opening. One in Douglaston and the one in Elmhurst is a Marriott Hotel, which they said opened last week. And there's people that are homeless that are moved into the shelter. It was a Marriott Hotel in Elmhurst. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Vinny? Yes. Let me speak to what uh, Peggy asked about. So, Peggy, what? I have had Kathy O'Leary paying attention to buildings um, for years now. So she's constantly checking to see where new construction permits are and and following up on other things related to uh, to buildings. And what we know is that this is my recollection that plans were submitted to the Department of Buildings to uh, construct a building that would have, I believe, 45 units. Those plans were, have been uh, denied at this stage of the situation. And we don't know any more than that. I think they were looking to go up four stories. The complication is that there were three buildings listed on one block and lot number and the application for that particular building um, did not cover the lot separation to build particularly on that property and we've not been able to get any further information out of the building department who's on the phone Hello? Unmute. They did rip down landscaping and big trees behind the building and they have a fence all around it. It's a big building to begin with, but the, its progress seems to be stalled. Nothing okay. seems to be going and on. One of the problems there, there are two different addresses for the same property. Yeah. There's an address on the avenue side, an address on uh, the street side. So that's, Laura and I have been working on that for the last month with Kathy's help and we've gotten nowhere. 
the last statement I got from the building department was, yes, there are three buildings on that property. Period. That was the answer. Yes, the church, the rectory, and the convent. No. Uh, the school. The school, the church, and the convent. That's correct. The rectory is there too. I don't know if it's on the same lot. Um, there was a question in that because the rectory address was different than the church address. So that, that's what we've been tracking, trying to track down. Okay, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Anything else, anyone? I don't see any other hands. Okay, so February 10th would be the next meeting. Is that correct, Gary? Uh, yes, I think so. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, get your vaccination. Please stay off, get offline with that crap. Get a private <laughs> practitioner to take care of you. Go to a hospital for these vaccinations. Don't sit on a street corner. Please do me that favor. Kathy oh. Sumsky, you had something before we leave? Uh, Vinny? You're muted, Kathy. Kathy. Go ahead, Kathy. Okay, can I please ask Gary to call me on my cell, please? Because I don't want you, I don't want to like say anything over the air. Whatever. Like, okay, Whatever. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Gary. And Vinny? Yes. Um, I think Bob Holden's office is going to be dispensing the vaccines when they're available. No, it has to have a doctor or a midwife. Right, I think they're going to have somebody okay. that's sure something posted. And they have to be affiliated with some... Let me explain the current uh, um, vac vaccine uh, comes six to, uh, six to 11 shots to a, a vial. Mm -hmm. They're frozen. They have to be mixed. They have to be used within 30 hours or they're destroyed. They have to be administered by a doctor or a midwife. Mm -hmm. So again, please, please, people, go to a doctor or go to a hospital. Forget all this street corner crap. It's your life. Think about it. Okay. Mr. Donald. Chan Donald. Here. Very simple. Hold, hold on, on. Hold on. Hold on. Donald first. Very simple. Uh, Bob Holden's office says that they're going to be giving out flu shots for the regular seasonal flu, not COVID. Thank you, Donald. Richie Uber, go ahead. Donald beat me to it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Anything Steve, else? Richard. Do remember, doctor, hospital, doctor, hospital. Stay off the street corners. Okay. Good night, Thank you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. I'm happy to be there. Good night, Good night everybody. everybody. Stay Thanks. safe. Be well. Good night. Good night.